Good evening, everyone. How you doing tonight? Come on, we have been praying for you. We've been praying for this, uh, this time together tonight. We are super excited. We have uh, from Chattanooga, Tennessee, an amazing worship band. 11th Hour Worship is here tonight. And we have uh, Dove Award winning, Grammy Award winning, uh, Leland Mooring and Casey Moore are in the house tonight. But I tell you, what I love the most about all of these guys and spending the whole weekend with them, just, just enjoying uh, the last uh, day or two, uh, is that they couldn't care less about any of those things I just said. Because they would say to you, and I, I say to you the same thing, we're not here uh, for the Woods Church name. We're not gathering under the name of 11th Hour Worship. We're not gathering under the name of Leland. We are gathered tonight under the name of Jesus. And he is the reason we are here. And he is the one who is going to receive all the glory tonight. So I'm simply going to pray. And then 11th Hour, is going to, 11th hour Worship is going to lead us for a bit tonight. And then we're just going to transition right into Leland and have a great night of worship. So let's get on our feet tonight. I want there to be freedom in this place. I don't know where you come from or what you do here at the Woods Church. I don't, we're a lot more concerned about the posture of your heart than we are about the posture of your body. So if you want to walk around, if you want to fill the aisles, if you want to lay down, if you want to kneel, I don't care. I want your heart to be open to what God wants to do tonight. And we're going to lift him up. Let's pray together and then let's just worship Jesus tonight. Father, we thank you, God, for this night. We thank you for the opportunity to gather as the body of Christ under one banner who is Jesus. God, unite us tonight uh, from all different churches, all different denominations. It doesn't matter. Tonight we are gathered under the banner of Jesus. And we are here for one purpose and one purpose only. That's to lift up your name, to glorify you, to magnify you. So, Father, would you be bigger than anything else tonight? Would you be louder than any other song tonight, Father? Would you be lifted higher than any other person tonight, God? We are here to bring you honor and bring you glory, Father. We love you. We love you. And we desire to spend ourselves on worship tonight. God, we don't seek God, we don't seek the experience of your presence. We seek the person of your presence who is Jesus. And so, Father, <laughs> inhabit the praises of your people tonight as we bring you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Magnify your name tonight. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break out the way to your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. Detroit, how y'all feeling tonight? Yep. And all my failures 
perfectly. Um, can we just set aside the lights and the cool sound system and the names for a second and just focus on one thing, and that is the greatness of God. That is the only reason that we are here tonight. So let's just lift up a sound of worship, a fragrance of worship to the Father tonight like never before. Get out of your comfort zone. Tonight's the night for that.
Thank you. 
God of all the ages, speaking into the void, creator uncreated, from him the heavens form. From him the heavens form. Sing, behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Behold the Savior of the world. Behold the one who offers life. Behold. From the beginning, destined to be condemned, fulfilling what was written, the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. Behold the name. to sing this out tonight. Worthy is the one who was and is and is to come. Come on, he's worthy, amen. And holy is the son whose sacrifice is paid with blood. We worship you, King. Worthy is the one who was and is and is to come. Yes, you are. Holy is the Son whose sacrifice is paid with blood. Come on, can we lift high the King tonight? We sing, Worthy is the one. And worthy is the one. And this and this to come. Yes, you are, Lord. And holy is the Son who sacrifices his faith with love. Oh, behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God. together for the king. You 
thoughts for me cannot be numbered there's so much higher in your design is so much sweeter than my desires come on let's sing this out tonight your plans for us they are good they are good your plans for us are good come on do you believe that tonight your plans for us they are good they are good your plans for us are good Sovereign will is set before me, though I can't see it. Oh, we worship you, King, we will trust, so I will trust, yeah, in your promise. Come on, church, and I believe it, I believe it, that your plans for us, they are good.
lift up our own sound of praise right now. Well, Whatever is in the deepest parts of your heart, in the deepest parts of your soul, let him hear that tonight. He's not some distant God who is just up on his throne looking down at you like, like you don't matter or like a peasant, but no, he, he stepped down from his throne for you and for me. If there's anyone here tonight who has been living a life of hopelessness and you just feel like you can't figure out what it is, the answer is Jesus. And that's as simple as it is. And that same Jesus is here with us tonight.
Stretch our hands towards heaven all over the house tonight. I'm just reminded in Revelation chapter 4, when John sees a glimpse into heaven, and even right now, church, as we speak, there are elders that are casting down their, their crowns at the feet of Jesus. And tonight I just think about how we have the opportunity to come into a space and to join in with heaven tonight. That we can lift high the name of Jesus. That we can offer up our best praise in this moment to the Lord. The angels are singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. So I just want to ask for in the next few moments, just lift up your own song to heaven. Let's join in with heaven as we sing, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. We lift you high, God. We lift you high, Jesus. We pray that your name is exalted upon every other name, God. That you will be enthroned upon the praises of your people tonight, Jesus. Come on, give him your best worship, your best praise. Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. Father, we just declare again in this place, God, that you are holy, that you are worthy, that you are good, that you are faithful, that you are merciful, that you are righteous, that you are forgiving, that you are life-giving, God, that you are pure, that you are leading, that you are guiding, that you are giving wisdom, that you are giving discernment, that you are faithful, that you alone are worthy of our praise tonight, Father. So good. You are so good. You are so good. We're overwhelmed by your goodness. We're overwhelmed by your faithfulness, God. And you alone are worthy of our praise. Amen and amen. Well, we are just getting started. We just want to continue just the spirit of worship in this place. Because like I said, it's not about any one person, but I do want to introduce you to some amazing dudes. Leland Mooring, Casey Moore. There's anointing on these guys, on their songs, on their ministry. And uh, I just want them to continue just the spirit of worship, just to continue to lead us tonight. Amen, amen. How you guys doing? Doing good? Awesome. Man. Well, how many of you have been with us most of the day today? Any hands in here? Awesome. Come on. God's presence has just been so real in this place at Overflow. Um, starting this morning into the afternoon, it was amazing, incredible. We are so, if this is your first time with us tonight, we are so honored that you came. You could be anywhere else in the world right now. You could be at the movies, you could be at dinner, you could be in your bed watching Netflix. But you decided to come tonight because you are a part of the remnant of people here in Detroit that are in the greater area that are hungry for a move of God. How many of you are hungry and thirsty for more of Jesus? It's God's presence that transforms and changes us, amen? You know, there's, uh, we were sh uh, sharing stories um, earlier today, me and actually John were talking about this, that, you know, in the Old Testament, there are multiple times the children of Israel, God spoke to the children of Israel and he said, before they went out to battle, he told them, he said, I want you to send out the Levites, your worshipers, your singers, your musicians, and I want you to send them out ahead of the armies of God. And they would go out seemingly defenseless. They didn't have any armor. They didn't have any weapons like swords or bows and arrows or shields. But they had the weapons of their voice. They had different kind of weapons. They had their voice and they had their instruments. And they, the Bible says that they just began to sing. In one particular battle in the Old Testament, it says that they stood before the, the enemy um, in front of them, this large intimidating army. They didn't know how they were going to defeat them, but God said, I don't want you to send out your soldiers first. I want you to send out your, your worshipers, those who, the Levites, who go out and sing. And I want you to send them ahead of the army, and I want them to sing. And the amazing thing is God didn't tell them, I want you to sing about how I'm going to defeat the enemy. You know, you think if any time it's, it's right, it's appropriate to sing a spiritual warfare song, it would be when you're about to fight, right? <laughs> this is probably the most appropriate time to do that. But God spoke to me, said, no, don't sing that. Sing about my steadfast love. And they began to sing in front of the enemy. You can imagine it. Outnumbered, outflanked, everything in the natural says this is not good. But there in that moment, they lifted their face to Jesus. They lifted their face to God. And they began to sing a song of faith. They said, God, they said, Blessed is the Lord, merciful forever, whose steadfast love and mercy endures forever and ever and ever, faithful to a thousand generations. As they begin to sing about the nature of God, the loving kindness of God, they begin to sing about, the Bible says God is love. They begin to sing about Him. As they sang, the Bible says that the, the, the enemy armies begin to fight amongst themselves and destroy themselves. 
I think that's a pattern. See, a lot of the times, you know, we can get used to these worship nights. We can get used to these worship services and we call them worship nights and we can kind of go through the motions of church a little bit and we can kind of forget the magnitude of what's happening when we come together. We're not just coming together to feel goosebumps or, or to, even, to even cry. I, how many of you love feeling God's presence? I love feeling God. I'm a bubbling mess. When I feel God, I got boogers start coming out my nose and my eyes swell up and I can't sing, I'm a mess. I love when I feel God's presence. But how many of you know that we don't worship by feeling, we worship by faith? And here's the amazing thing about faith. We're gonna dive right back in, but this is the amazing thing about faith and you've already done it tonight. Faith is not blind faith. The Bible doesn't say that we cross our fingers and just hope that everything's gonna work out. The Bible says that all of the promises of God for you and me that are pertaining to life, which is everything that you need in your life, healing in your body, uh, life provision, and godliness, all the things, a supernatural part of the, our character being changed into God's image. Everything pertaining to life and godliness is in the promises of God, and that it says that all of the promises of God find their yes in Jesus. And it says, through the Holy Spirit, we resound back to God, amen, for His glory. Now here's the thing, amen just isn't some old church thing. Amen means simply, I agree and I believe. So when we, when we sing out a worship song, like we were singing, holy are you Lord God Almighty, that means God, you are so completely other than anyone or anything in this life. There's no one like you in all the world. And as you begin to sing holy, you're saying in your spirit, God, I believe, I agree. You know, the amazing thing is you can even come tonight and you might have doubts. Some of us might have doubts and worries and anxieties and fears, just like the man that came to Jesus and he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So you can even sing that tonight in worship. You can say, God, I believe that you are who you say you are, but there, are, there is some doubt in my life. There is worry. I give that worry to you, Jesus. Help my unbelief. Help me to believe who all you are, who you say you are. And as you worship by faith, the amazing thing is the Holy Spirit and the grace of God come and flood your worship. He inhabits. The Bible says he lives and dwells inside of us. He no longer de desires to dwell in buildings made with human hands, but God desires to dwell inside of your heart. Live that you become the house of the living God everywhere you go. When you lie down at night, when you wake up in the morning, when you're seated with nothing to do, when you're traveling on the road, you are the house of the living God. Amen? That's what Jesus purchased for us on the cross. Amen, amen. Use your voice as a weapon tonight. Don't allow the enemy to silence you. The Bible says life and death are in your tongue. Life and death. You have the authority in Christ to sing and speak life. So, God, we set our minds on you tonight. We set our hearts on you tonight, Jesus. You are so other. You are so high and lifted up. And we worship you. We thank you as we worship by faith that you are healing our bodies and setting us free from sickness and disease. That as we worship by faith, Jesus, you are healing our minds and setting us free from depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. That Jesus, as we worship by faith tonight, you're removing all the power of addiction. You're breaking the bondage of addiction. Addiction to pornography, addiction to substance abuse, addiction to digital addiction to our phones. God, you're setting us free from all these things that are holding us back, that are clinging like weights to us, God, keeping us from our full potential in you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that your kingdom is on the earth, it's inside of us, and your kingdom can't be shaken. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Give God a shout of praise, he's awesome. Amen. All right, here we go.
not height nor depth, not life nor death. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Yeah. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah, sing it. The battle Sing it over your family Sing it over your city Hey, nothing Oh, who can stop the Lord Give me a shout Bible says that in John chapter 1 it says that and to any who believed in Jesus he gives them the right to become children of the living God born again but this time we're it says not born of blood nor are we born for the will of the flesh nor are we born for the will of man but born again for the will of God. There's something powerful about that when you really think about it. You see, when we are born into the world, we grew up with our identity attached to our bloodline and our family. And depending on what kind of heritage you come from, in my family, there's a lot of addiction and going back a few generations to alcoholism and all sorts of things. When I gave my life to Jesus, I might have been predisposed to those things when I was born, but when I gave my heart to Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God purchased my life, and I'm no longer identified by the bloodline of my family and all the problems, but God starts over anew with me. The blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus, is my heritage. It's my DNA. The Bible says that we are born again into the family of God, redeemed from the kingdom of darkness, adopted into the family of God. See, there's something amazing about the blood of Jesus because what's powerful about it is that the Bible says that we have not been redeemed by perishable or cheap things like silver and gold, but by the imperishable blood of Jesus. If God thought you and I were cheap, he would have purchased us with something cheap. The value of something is determined by the price that you pay for it. And when God purchased us back into his heart, he gave himself. There is no higher price. There is no higher value than the blood of Jesus. 
It is the highest value in all of the universe and outside of the universe. There is nothing of greater value than the blood of Jesus. Its value is eternal. So when God shed his blood for your life, he was saying, you are worth my blood. Think about that for a minute. You are worth my blood. The Bible says that God so loved you, he gave his only son. He so loved you. He didn't feel obligated to do it. He did it out, out of his own nature because God is love. And love believes all things, hopes all things. When God looks at you, he continues to believe every morning. He continues to hope. We might look at ourselves in the mirror and think something different. But when Jesus looks at us because Jesus is love, he believes and hopes all day long that you will become who he created you to be in him. When you surrender your life to him, he knows what his grace, his love, and his goodness can supernaturally do by the spirit of God in your life. And nothing's impossible. If with man, it's impossible. With you, it's impossible. Yeah, I'm, I'm impossible to try to change myself like that. But the Holy Spirit, the goodness of God, what's impossible with me is possible with God. So the second thing is we're no longer born for the will of the flesh. We have, we have a body that has desires. We have a soul, a mind, will, and emotions that we can be led by all day long. But the Bible says we're blessed are those who are led by the Spirit of God. They shall be called sons and daughters of God. We're alive to be led by the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lived inside of him is now inside of us, leading and guiding and speaking and changing. And we're no longer alive for the will of man, but for the will of God. Our identity never has to come from another person ever again for the rest of our life. A lot of the times when we say, I love you to somebody, we're really saying, I need you to love me back. If you don't do this for me, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And if you're not... If you're not fulfilling my expectations, then all my identity is demolished. That's not the gospel. The gospel is an overcoming gospel. Jesus wants our identity to be in him. It says that when Jesus, knowing that he came from the Father and that he was going back to the Father, he knelt down and began to wash his disciples' feet. When we know where our identity comes from, then we can actually begin to love people unconditionally, like the Bible says, calls us to love. Unconditionally, with no strings attached, the way God loves us. Amen? So this next song, the Bible says that God's blood speaks a better word about you. It speaks a better word about your family, about your future, about your circumstances right now. God is speaking a better word and singing a better word over you tonight. So let's sing this song and remind ourselves of it in worship. Let's sing what God's singing, amen?
life over my family. Speaking destiny and purpose over my city. It's rewriting my history. It covers me with destiny. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history yeah, 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 yeah. It covers me with destiny I know it's making It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history yeah. It covers me with destiny
to sing a song of faith even when oh, even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop
your hands across the place and just as you lift them once you imagine lifting that scenario to Jesus that thing that seems impossible in front of you what's impossible with man it's possible with God and I believe as we sing us again I worship you as we sing that to him Jesus the author and the finish of our faith he's going to fill us with greater faith greater hope and greater love Fear has to do with punishment. And God does not want to punish his children. God is a God of love. Oh, and I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, despite it all, God, I worship you, cause you deserve it, greater than my circumstances, God, oh, I worship you, yeah, I worship you.
Let's have some battles tonight. Some of us have been worn out by that ground warfare. Some of us feel a little worn down and tired. Battle weary and battle worn. But God never meant for us to fight out of our strength, no. I hear the Lord saying, put down your sword and put down your shield and I know the enemy's before you and you want to pick up that sword. I know the enemy seems to outnumber you and you want to pick up that shield. Oh, but I don't want you to fight this one with your strength. No, I want you to fight with your song. For I am the Lord God, your warrior, and I'm strong in battles. I'm strong in battle. I'm the God who makes a way in the wilderness. I'm the God who speaks and the earth shakes. When you sing my name, your enemy will devour himself before you. As I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies, oh, don't sing what you see in the natural. Sing what you hear me sing, my child. Oh.
Day and night, night 
Rise from our life, God. Let it rise from our life, Jesus. You know, um, I was uh, with my my cousin. Uh, she does a country music and uh, full time, and I went with her on a songwriting trip a few years ago and she's like a little sister to me and so she took me out there with her to do some songwriting some country songs I mean you like country anybody come on I've seen some big trucks up here we don't have them all down in Texas um, but we went there to write and there was a, a period in the trip for about two days where it was about a four-day trip, and there was this one specific day where she had a lot of things scheduled, a lot of meetings, and I didn't have anything to do, and I didn't know anything about Uber at the time. It was kind of a new thing. So I was inside of this house. We were staying in this guy's house. Um, this really wealthy guy was letting us stay there at his home, and it's this beautiful home, and right there in the middle of Hollywood in L.A., and I'm uh, in, this, in this massive home, and... I come to find out later that the house was actually previously owned by this like adult film guy. So it had a spirit on it for sure. <laughs> had some vibes going on. Um, I was there by myself in this house 
and uh, had nothing to do all day. And I was just sitting around and, and then all of a sudden as I was, you know, going through the day, I just, it's like all this anxiety and worry and fear started building up of situations I was going through in my life. And uh, just different things that I was, we were dealing with financially and, and, uh, and in our family. And so all the stuff was just kind of spinning out of control in my thought life. And, and all of a sudden, it's like, it's like this light bulb went off and I was just like, no, this is not God. This is not right. This is worry and worry doesn't come from the Lord. You know, worry is the opposite of meditating on the word of God. If you, if you want to, uh, know how to meditate uh, just think about what you do when you worry it's the exact same thing as if you know how to worry you know how to meditate and um, and when we worry all we're doing is just taking this imagination God's given us this creativity that God's given us and we're dwelling on Satan's promise for our life the Bible says that Satan comes to steal to kill and destroy and if you worry long enough you spend time on that thing long enough and you allow the enemy to you worry and spend your, really think about his lies for our life. If we do that long enough and we start imagining the worst possible outcome of this scenario, right? We start kind of spinning out of control. What happens is eventually that can become an atmosphere of fear in your life. And fear can produce all sorts of things because it's the opposite of the nature of God. So it has to do with punishment. So for some of us, it could be addiction. Some of us, it's it's, uh, it's suicidal thoughts or depression or anxiety. For some of us, um, it's anger and, and resentment, whatever that is. But it's fear. It's all the same thing. And it comes from that place of meditating on really what Satan has planned for our life. But the Bible says that if, if that all the promises of God are yes and amen. So the opposite is true in the kingdom of God. If I meditate on the word of God, all I'm doing is just taking the promise that God has for me in that area of my life. So let's say it's sickness and we're, we're dealing with the sickness in our body. And so we find scriptures that talk about the healing power of God, that God is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, that, that healing is the children's bread, that he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity. The punishment that brings me peace was upon him and, and brought by his stripes, I'm healed. What happens is as I begin to sing out and meditate on that scripture that by his stripes, my body is healed. My mind is healed. As I begin to do that, through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit wants to write the word of God on the tablet of our heart. And what you're doing, your Bible, the word of God, the Holy Spirit spoke this to me recently. It was really cool. Uh, you know, I had this kind of, whenever I heard those words, the word of God, because I grew up in church my whole life. Any church kids in here? You know, I was, uh, I was in every Easter play growing up. I've been everything from a, you know, an Israelite to, uh, you know, a, uh, a demon in a play and an angel, I've been them all. But so I'm a church kid through and through, but sometimes when I hear things like the word of God, it, even that phrase just has its, all these memories attached to it, good, bad, and, and a lot of religious ideas attached to it. So sometimes the, the enemy can even use things like that to pull us away from just reading the Bible, the word of God. And, and I was reading it one day and the Holy Spirit brought me to the scripture where it says that all scripture is breathed by the Spirit of God and inspired by the Holy Spirit. There's another scripture that says, no one knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit inside of a man. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts or the mind of God except the Spirit of God that's been given to us. So you can actually say the word of God is the thoughts of God. It's the thoughts and the imaginations of God. That, that Bible, that book, it's, just, it's not just a normal book. It's the, it's the thought and the mind, the thoughts and the mind of God. And when you allow the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, to breathe on the, that Bible, as you begin to worship and sing it, say it, think it, pray it, as you begin to do that in, in prayer, write it and, and invite the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth into that place, what happens is he starts renewing your mind and filling you not with your thoughts about yourself, but God's thoughts about yourself, not with your thoughts about your family and future and circumstances, but what God thinks about you, your family, your circumstances, your city. And now all of a sudden, an atmosphere of hope and faith starts to grow in your life. And everywhere you go, you begin to, no matter 
whatever trouble you're facing, this is how Jesus overcomes the world. The Bible said, Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. This is how he overcomes through us, is that he begins to establish his kingdom. His mind is his kingdom. How God thinks, that's his kingdom. How God thinks about our future, our life, our city, our family, our own selves. That's the kingdom of God, and that kingdom can't be shaken. And so what happened there in that room is I just began to sing. I began to pull out some scriptures that talked about the love of God, the secret place, Matthew 6, getting near to God. I began to sing those scriptures and those words, and then this song began to fall out out of worship in that place there in the living room in this old nasty house. No matter where you are, man, the presence of God, the Spirit of God can invade whatever place you're in. The Bible, God wants you to be an atmosphere changer, that everywhere you go, every word out of your mouth, the thoughts that you think, the words that you speak, you have the authority by the Spirit of God and through the Word of God to change the atmosphere in your home, to change the atmosphere in your car. See, God wants our minds to be so drenched by His Word that any time the enemy whispers and lies, it becomes laughable right? Sometimes there's, our mind is so full of just junk and, and so not full of the Word of God that it becomes hard to discern between our thoughts and a thought from the enemy and a lie from the enemy, and it just sort of sneaks in there. But when your mind is filled with the thoughts of God, when you lie down at night, when you wake up in the morning, when you're seated in your home, and when you're, and when you're traveling by the way, then Deuteronomy, God said, teach this to your children when they lie down at night, when they wake up in the morning, when they're seated with nothing to do, when they're traveling on the road. Our days look totally different, yours and mine, but we both have those four areas of our day. I'm trying to give you something here tonight that you can take with you and actually can begin to implement by the Spirit of God and can bring lifelong transformation and change. How many of you know that we can have amazing moments in the presence of God? But God doesn't just want us to have a mountaintop moment. He wants us to have freedom and change. This presence of God that we feel tonight in the room, this isn't just here just so we can feel something. You know what's happening when we feel something? God is tenderizing our heart so that, like Jesus said, that the word of the gospel of the seed, the seed of the word of God, can be deposited into your heart and change your mind, which changes your whole life. If God can change the way you think and the way you see and renew your mind, He'll change your whole life. It'll, it'll change your marriage. It'll change the way you treat your wife. It'll change the way you look at your kids, even your ones who are far off from the Lord. It'll change the way you look at your best friends, even the ones you're over familiar with. Now you'll start to see them according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. It'll change the way you see your workers and even those who treat you like enemies. God wants to renew your mind and change the way we see so that we can actually start being little Christ-like ones in the world around us. Amen? Amen. Come on, why don't we stand together? So my, my, as we sing these last couple of songs together and before we're dismissed tonight, and my, this is my challenge to you. My challenge to you is tonight before you lay your head down at night. Some of you are having a hard time going to sleep. Some of us are, are waking up in the middle of the night with anxiety attacks and all sorts of stuff. But here's my encouragement to you. Tonight before you go to bed, take out your Bible and find one or two scriptures. That's the good thing about the internet and Google, you know? Use it as a weapon for prayer. And look, if you need scriptures about healing, type into Google scriptures on healing. If you need scriptures about freedom or scriptures on peace that surpasses understanding, joy inexpressible, filled with glory, you just begin to find those scriptures. Take two or three of them. And then right there in your, with your Bible open, laying on your bed, just begin to invite the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth, the Bible says. Jesus said he'll remind you of every word I've spoken to you. That Paul said he wants to write, the spirit of God wants to write it on the tablet of your heart. The word of God, no longer written by ink on tablets of stone, but by the spirit on tablets of human hearts. That's, that's the supernatural part of our walk with God. That as we open up, we can open up this book that is supernaturally inspired by the spirit of God. And then the Holy Spirit, who is supernatural, comes and, and from the inside, it begins to fill up our bedroom right there on our bed. And as we open up the scripture, say, God, I can memorize this. And that's the best thing I can do. And I'm going to do that. But God, I thank you as I sing this, as I say it, 
as I think it. God, you're going to actually write it on the tablet of my heart and change the way that I think and change the way that I live. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. Everything we do and say comes from how we think. So you could actually say, Jesus said, I only think about what my Papa thinks about. God wants us to be so changed that when we wake up in the morning, we're filled with the thoughts of God. We're filled with the thoughts of God about every situation in our life. And now everywhere you go, no matter what kind of circumstance you're going through, you're not wearing your problem. You're not, you're not a product of your problems, but you're overcoming by the grace of God, by faith, through worship, and through the Word of God. The Bible says, through the Word of God, we become partakers of the divine nature of God. Amen? Through the Word of God, we become, through these great and precious promises, we become partakers of the divine nature of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Amen? So tonight, if you felt God, what's happening is the Holy Spirit is tenderizing your heart right now so that you can become good soil. Amen? Say this with me. Holy Spirit, make me good soil so that your words can be be planted into my heart and grow a hundredfold. In Jesus' name. I love your presence, God. I love you. There's no one like you, God. can't get enough I can't get enough of your amazing love I can't get enough can't walk away There is nothing like your love. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh, there's nothing like your presence, Jesus. Make my heart your own. Come and be my atmosphere, oh spirit. I can't get enough. Oh, I can't get enough. Oh Jesus, I can't get enough. You're amazing love. Oh, you're amazing love. Jesus, I can't get enough.
English right now. You can sing out your own melody. You can sing out your own song. He loves to hear the cry of your heart. The cry of your heart. Jesus, we worship you. 
God, be lifted up in our life. Draw them into you, Jesus. In our conversation, God, let your name be the name over our thought line. Let your name be lifted up, God, in our workplace. Let your name be lifted up in our family at home. Let your name be lifted up, God, in our marriage. Let your name be lifted up again in our churches, God. You be the center of it all, God. Death could not hold you. The veil saw me fall you. Yeah. And the heavens are roaring. presence, man. Let's, let's just give a big thank you to Leland and 11th Hour Worship. I want to thank you guys for just being so faithful, so faithful to lead us into the throne room tonight, just experience his presence. That's, it's been our prayer for you. We've been praying for this weekend and this night of worship for weeks upon weeks, and our main prayer was that you would encounter the living God, that God would speak to you that God would speak life to you, that God would reveal himself to you, that God would encourage you, that you would just experience him. I've been praying personally, I've just been praying for meetings to take place between the Holy Spirit and you throughout this entire night. I've just been praying for meetings to take place. So I pray that you are blessed. Let me just pray over you as we go tonight. Dearly Father, we have so loved being in your presence tonight. We have sensed your Holy Spirit moving and working. We've sensed you moving in our own hearts. And Father God, I pray, I pray that Lord Jesus, even though 
We may walk out these doors here in just a few moments. God, we don't leave your presence. Your presence goes with us. And God, we're going to choose as Christ followers. We choose to feast on you. God, you showed me a picture tonight as we were singing that song, Surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You showed me that picture of that table that you placed before us, that you prepare and put before us. Just as David probably sang and wrote in Psalm 23 that, man, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you reminded me of that tonight, Lord Jesus, because I know there were people that walked in here tonight that were hurting that were broken. Marriages are on the edge of divorce. God, the enemy's been attacking and getting the, the better of so many. And God, you reminded me that, yeah, the enemy's out there and the enemy's gonna be out there because he wants, as was spoken earlier, to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, you reminded me, Father, that you prepared that table and that table is right before us and on that table is your grace. And on that table is your mercy. And on that table is your forgiveness. And on that table is your salvation. And on that table is your strength and your courage. And God, we choose as Christ followers, we're not going to be uh, distracted to take our eyes off of you and onto these things that are happening around us, under these challenges that are confronting us. Confronting us, God, we're choosing tonight to feast at that table. We're choosing to fill ourselves with the things, the only things that will satisfy us. And that's your word. And that's intimacy with you. And that's prayer. And the things that we're going to feast on are the things of God. So I pray as we go tonight that we would feast on the right things. That we would feast on you. And God, when we feast on you, the enemy loses his power. When we feast on you, Lord Jesus, the enemy can't do a whole lot because we're surrounded by you. We're surrounded by your presence. I thank you, Jesus. I praise your name. Everybody said, amen. amen. Hey, if you don't have a church home, we invite you back Sunday. 11th hour is going to be leading us in worship Sunday morning. Come and join us. As you go tonight, may you go and passionately pursue God and relentlessly reveal Jesus to the world. Have a great night.